Talking now to Colin Dex, the creator of Inspector Morse. Uh, we've got 12 books, 31 films. What is the appeal of Inspector Morse? Ah, Inspector's English, slow-paced, a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, tediously paced for some people. I think. I think. I think the secret of him is that that, that some people feel just about as much uh, vulnerability and sensitivity as he's got, if you know what I mean. I think he, he, he's a pessimist, isn't he? I, th- I, th- I, th- I thought most of us were pessimists myself. I'm deeply pessimistic about the future of the human race. I think that slight sadness and melancholy comes over, as a character, this is. But in the stories, I, I mean, I think that obviously a lot of things play a part, don't they? I think the books are reasonably well plotted. Uh, who done it rather than uh, why done it, aren't they? Uh, Oxford, of course, plays a big part. Do you think the Oxford has the the large audience appeal? The city itself, yeah. I mean, I think the city of Oxford. I mean, it's, pe- pe- people come here, don't they, all over the shop? They're a huge tourist attraction, and it's not difficult to see why history. Tradition, architecture, museums, libraries. Above all, his feeling of scholarship, I think. What, from 12th, 13th century onward. And it's a wonderful place to be in, isn't it? And I think Inspector Morse would not have been so popular if it had been, if it had been set in some place like what? mustn't say Rochdale. I met a dear friend recently from Rochdale who said what a marvellous place it was. But, uh, you, you know, Rotherham sort of area, which I'm sure is a splendid city as well. But uh, I, I do feel that I have been very lucky in this uh, alma mater of Oxford. It's been a very, very happy foster mother for me. How do you go about writing your novels? Well, I never learnt to type. And I shall do if I come back in some future life. Seems to me highly unlikely, but if I do, I shall learn how to type. I write in longhand, pen on paper, and and write a lot of rubbish, and then go back and rewrite it in longhand. It's the way I always do things. And then I get it typed. I can't type myself, as I say, but I get it typed. A dear, dear lady up the road types it for me. And then, uh, obviously, make some changes sometimes then, but... Basically, the writing thing for me, the technical, physical business of writing is pen on paper and then again pen on paper. When it's gone through from A to Z, I just do it again and tart it up a bit. Do you do a lot of uh, research for each book? Don't do any at all. I think if you write whodunits, you you can't uh, can't, uh, do too much research. There's a case on at the minute, isn't there, where there are murders down in Kent somewhere, something like... A hundred thousand depositions, statements from various people, hundreds of thousands of inquiries all here and there. Well, I mean, this is not very interesting, is it? Especially if none of them have got anything whatsoever to do with, do with, do with the murder. But the, the police, the way the police go about things has to be a little tedious. You, you, you don't get two intelligent fellows or semi-intelligent fellows coming knocking on the door and asking you these uh, shrewd or recondite questions, do you? You, you? you get hundreds and hundreds of policemen on their hands and knees looking for condoms or whatever. I mean, this is what police is all about. And, of course, it isn't very interesting unless they discover something. So you cut it all out. And I, 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 don't, uh, I, I, I don't do any research on the police at all. And, of course, they twit, twit me about this, quite, quite rightly so, too. But no, no research on the police or on pathology, I don't know. I see a pathologist sometimes and say, would this have killed somebody? Or if she's been lying on the, you know, the canal for, you know, a week, what colour would her face be? It's not because I want to know, but I don't want to get it wrong. You say, well, what, you say, what colour do you think it would be? You say, white. And you say, no, it would be blue or black or green or anything you like, yellow, but it wouldn't be white. This is If they say this, pick one of the other colours. If that's research, I just about do it. But uh, I, I know nothing about scene of crime officers or anything like that, no. Morse has a love for real ale, and according to him, there's always time for another pint. How much of you is in Inspector Morse? Well, the meanness with the money in a pub, I mean, it's a dreadful thing he's got, but that's not me at all. I mean, 
if you if you begin to write, unless you're a genius, which I am not, you're going to be semi-autobiographical, aren't you, sir? I mean, my greatest loves in life are the poets, especially the 19th century poet. Uh, beer, whiskey, the crossword puzzle, Wagner, Richard Stroud. I mean, one can go on and say, well, that's going to be reflected in the books you write. Of course it is. And so in that sense... In that sense, uh, I suppose there's a good deal of me and Moore's. But certainly not from the point of view of... Uh, he's very ungracious, isn't he? very mean, ungracious. He never says thank you. Very seldom, anyway, says thank you to anybody. I hope that's not me. He's a bit of an amalgam. Do you get thirsty when you think? Uh, yeah, well, I always feel thirsty, yeah. I think this whole business of drinking, certainly alcohol, it, it depends. On, pe people are so different about it. There are some people who drink a lot and who can't think and can't speak very clearly after they've got gently merry late in the evening or something. And there are other people whose minds become more lucid but who are not so good at uh, maybe speaking or walking or something like that and we're all different and Morse has got the just this one uh, thing about him and that is that his mind uh, runs much more sweetly and smoothly uh, on alcohol than than uh, than anything else so if he gets stuck he's got to have a drink yeah. yeah now I appeared for 10 whole seconds at the beginning credits of Twilight of the Gods have you ever appeared in the TV programs I've, I've, I've appeared in all of them except a couple, I think. Uh, we had one in Australia. They didn't think I was worth a return ticket to Australia. And I think I overacted so badly, so they told me in one of them, and I was left on the cutting room floor. But I think I've appeared in, in, in all of them except two. And in this last one that's coming up, I play a very large part indeed, I have to say. Dress up as a Bishop of Oxford and say the grace in Oriel uh, uh, to do. So that's a, a huge part, isn't it? Now, currently there's an exhibition of Inspector Morse at the Museum of Oxford. What do you think about the exhibition? Well, I, I don't, really was so busy talking to people, I didn't see it, but it's, it's obviously very gratifying. I, I mean, nobody wants to go over the top on these things, but I suppose a lot of people do watch uh, watch old Morse or read about him, and I, I suppose it's quite nice to have a centre of interest as I say, so long as it doesn't get too self-indulgent and over the top. And I feel very proud and very gratified that both the town and the gown elements in the books are, are reflected there, I think in a very happy and satisfactory way. Are you surprised at the success of Morse? Well, not really, because it was all an aggregate, you know. You, you happen gradually. You write one book and then... I mean, I've never been a full-time writer. I've been in education all my life. But... Uh, you write one book and then somebody says, why don't you write another one? And What about writing another one? And, and uh, so, so it goes on. The same with the television. We did a series and somebody says, well, you know, it's just about, just about worth another series. So you have another series. And somebody says, we might as well do three. So the whole thing is built up so gradually that I, I don't think it's a question of surprise, but I, I think very, very gratified that... Uh, People do enjoy both the telly and the book so much. Obviously, it's very pleasing to any author if, if uh, the readers to keep turning the pages and want to. And, and if the people are watching the telly, you know, take the phone off the hook and say, I'm not going to be interrupted. I mean, this is a, a wonderful thing for somebody who's written uh, books, isn't it, and had them done on the telly. Biggest accolade of all. And are we going to hear any more from Inspector Morse? Not very much, no. Already... I think 73, I've not added them up, but I think that there is 73 body bags in, in and around Oxford since I brought the inspector onto the scene here. And I think that's it's almost enough. I mean, Oxford has become, fictionally, about the crime capital of the United Kingdom. And uh, there'll be one or two more murders yet. I, I know that. We should go up to 75, I think, before we, before, before we finish. But uh, I think the, he's, getting, he's not getting very very much younger and he's certainly getting a little more weary and uh, ill and so I think the old boy will have to finish very soon.